Mystery Fandom Theater 2000, Episode F01, Little Red Riding Hood. have a little plastic surgery done. You know, it is the year 2000, and we wouldn't want to enter the new millennium just being the same old us. Yeah, Mike, it's the future. Time for a change. An opportunity to start the new millennium with a whole new look. Uh, you two are aware that the new millennium doesn't start until 2001, don't you? Mike, 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 a millennium is a thousand years, correct? Well, yeah, but you And see, it is the year 2000, 1,000 years after the year 1,000, right? Well, yeah, but you see... And the Earth did celebrate the coming of the new millennium with a grandiose display of fireworks, didn't they? Well, except for Las Vegas and Hollywood, which really came across as rather pathetic. So what's your problem, Mike? It's the new millennium, 1,000 years after the last millennium. Well, see, the problem is, there was no year zero. The calendar started with the year one, so the first millennium occurred a thousand years after that in 1001, and the next millennium occurs in 2001. You mean to say that Crow and I underwent painful reconstructive surgery because your species can't count? Yeah, like, the whole world launched a New Year's Spectacular for nothing. Well, not really. See, it's kind of like when your car's odometer rolls over to 100,000 miles. It's something people find really cool. That, and a lot of folks made the same mistake you two did. Oh, I see. So when the actual millennium arrives next year, there'll be an even bigger celebration, right? Actually, it'd probably be nothing more eventful than TNT running 2001 A Space Odyssey for 40 hours straight on New Year's Eve. Oh, goody. We're going to party like it's 1979 and we're spending the evening at Grandma's house. That's about the size of it. Well, when did your bandages come off? Oh, we might as well take them off right now. It's not like there's a purpose for any of this anymore. This will take a little while. We'll be right back. So, Mike, everything looking that nose fixed. was calling the kettle black and the kettle was ashamed to answer back then the kettle got shined with a brillo pad now it's the pot that's feeling bad 99 squeezes 99 makes the brillo so pad shine 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 the soap keep working such a long long time 99 squeezes 99 hear me now that's not all the brillo soap pads got the rust resistor sure helps a lot as long as the pad keeps making soap. Oh, Mr. Rust, he got no hope. There's lots more soap to cut through the crust and rust resistor to resist the rust. Yes, 99 squeezes, 99 makes the Brillo soap pad shine, shine, shine. The soap keep working such a long, long time. 99 squeezes, 99. Brillo soap pad shine, shine, shine. So you see, Mike, with the increased aerodynamic benefit provided by the fins, as well as my narrower noggin, I decreased the turbulent flow around me, and thereby reduced my overall drag by 12.42% and increased my fuel economy. That's pretty neat, Servo. How'd you figure out your drag coefficient? Set up a complex modeling program on the ship's computer? Oh no, it was much simpler than that. I just latched onto a column by Airlock A7 and popped that sucker right open. With the resulting explosive decompression, a pretty powerful wind went sweeping down that corridor. <laughs> 
<laughs> By measuring the strain in my arms, I was able to calculate my drag coefficient. And from there, I was fit and city. I can't believe you did that! You opened the ship to space? Oh, calm down, Nelson. It's not like I didn't close it again. But, you know, we all could have been killed! I mean, it's like... Wait a minute, how come the alarms went off? You actually went alerted when you opened both airlocks. I simply shut those off, Mike. I couldn't be troubled with all those lights and sirens. I was trying to make science happen. But still, you gotta let us know when you're doing stuff like that. At least the safety systems are back online now. Hmm? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, back online, huh? Of course. <sighs> well, guys, what do you think of my rhinoplasty? Um... Uh, mm. Servo, help me out here. I don't think you're the one who needs help here, Mike. Come on, guys, tell me what you think. Be honest. Well... Huh, the Mads are calling. And be sure that hatchway seals tightly, Frank. I didn't buy that radiation-proof weather stripping for nothing. <laughs> sure thing, Dr. Forrester. Ah, Mike! Uh, hello. Uh, no problems here, nothing the matter. Nothing <laughs> except that pesky little nuclear core. Uh, yes, thank you, Frank. Uh, little mishap, you could say. Nuclear core? What happened? And where are you? Where's Deep 13? Yes, well, evidently there was a little problem with the nuclear reactor. Apparently, someone didn't perform the Y2K readiness test that I assigned him. Turns out there was a bit of a bug in the cooling system, so we've had to temporarily relocate down here. Yeah, for, uh, you know, a couple of decades or so. Exactly. So, we've moved to Deep 13B, my auxiliary command center. I thought you said we were fleeing to the basement. Shh! Wow, so you're stuck down there. In Deep 13's basement. Trapped. <laughs> With no way to inflict movies on us? Don't be ridiculous. I have yet to run out on an experiment. The first thing I grabbed was... the operational control systems. And you needn't worry about us running out of movies. Deep 13B also happens to be where I keep my film library. As long as we're stuck suffering down here, Nelson, you'll be suffering up there. Well, that's good to hear. Should we get on with the invention exchange, then? The, uh, uh, in the invention, yes. Um, I've got it right, um, uh, there it is, there it is, hold on. Don't, don't, get out! Ah, here we are, Mike. This is the, uh, the snooze shovel. One end is for work, the other end is for play. Now you can take a break without being accused of lying down on the job. A boon for many in today's workforce. What do you think about that, Nelson? Okay. Wow, that's really, uh, practical, I, I guess. Anyway, my new invention is a bit more whimsical than your utilitarian device. I got to thinking about the county fairs of my childhood. You went to county fairs? Well, there wasn't a lot to do in Wisconsin as a kid. Anyway, I got to thinking about the old pastime of spin art, and how much fun it was to create works of abstract art with only minimal effort. But spin art is still a limited a medium. The artist doesn't have any real control over the picture. You can't create masterpieces to express profound depths of human emotion. Yeah, let's face it. Most spin art looks like a schizophrenic's unsuccessful attempt to paint a bullseye. Yeah. So I created a new variant that combines the fun with part of this complete breakfast. Spin art toast. Now you can create spin art and eat it too. Instead of paints, we've used all natural, lightly sweetened jams and jellies. Hey, Mike, slop a little of that boysenberry black on there for me. All right. Yeah, try some kiwi green around the edges. Not too much, though. It's high in calories. Okay. Mmm, looking good. And a little bit of homemade kumquat jelly to finish things off. There. And it's so tasty, too. What do you think of that, Dr. F? Well, Nelson, didn't anyone ever tell you that only children play with their food? No matter, your childish joy won't last long. Your movie this week is Little Red Riding Hood from our friends south of the border. I think you'll find the directress lacking in artistic sense as your robot's plastic surgeons. Send them the movie, Frank. Frank, I said... Now look, Crow, if you don't want Servo going after your horns for the Asian aphrodisiac market, mm -hmm. you're going to have to change back. Aww. And Servo, I hate to say it, Finns went out of style in the 50s. For a reason. Oh, my Finns, my beautiful Finns! <laughs> we got movies! Nice! Nice!